Hello, Hub Video Audio Stuff. Welcome back. Today for you guys, I'm going to be taking a look at Canon's 35mm f2 IS lens. For a little while now, I've been using my Samyang slash Rokinon 35mm f1.4 and generally, I've liked using it. However, recently, there have been some things that I've kind of grown to dislike about it. Firstly, the weight. The Samyang 35mm weighs more than my Canon 24-70 f4, which it seems excessive, and I know why it is, it's because it's a large aperture lens, it should weigh more, more glass equals, equals more weight, etc, etc. Secondly, for video, I find I rarely, if ever, use f1.4. I find things are just ever so slightly too soft, and plus you've got the razor thin depth of field to work with. So I thought, no, I don't need such a wide maximum aperture. And thirdly, it's an issue of focus breathing. This is not something that really troubles me when I'm rack focusing, it's more that when I'm filming something up close, I lose that true 35mm angle. Let me show you what I mean right now. Starting out with the Samyang, and you can see quite a shift in viewing angle. However, the Canon isn't perfect either, but I do find it an improvement. I also noticed a slight difference in light transmission. At f8, the Canon seems to have around half a stop, maybe even more, better light transmission. My Canon 24-70 f4 IS was by far the best of the three lenses I tested for focus breathing. The loss of that true 35mm focal length is really obvious when we look at the three examples side by side. Compare the sizes of the headstock of this guitar in the three examples. In the two Canon examples you can see that the headstocks are approximately the same size, whereas in the Samyang example it is noticeably more zoomed in. However, in this real world example I found that there was no noticeable focus breathing from the Canon whatsoever and it's lovely and almost cine lens looking. So I thought no I'm not putting up with this hullabaloo so I went looking for a lens that has not quite such a wide maximum aperture, doesn't cost the earth, is smaller and lighter and doesn't suffer with the same degree of focus breathing problems and I found Canon's 35mm f2. So what is it? It's a 35mm prime lens with a still fairly wide maximum aperture of f2 and it has the added benefit of optical image stabilisation. It's also significantly lighter and smaller than the Samyang at only two thirds of its size and weight. So whilst this is not deemed an L lens with its fancy red ring, it seems to be really highly regarded and also meets my criteria in every area. So is it well built? Well it has a plastic housing, albeit very nice plastic, certainly as good as any of the plastic used on any L lens. The mount itself is made of metal which is always good so it feels solid, however bear in mind it doesn't have the rubber gasket so this is not considered a, a weather sealed lens. So just be careful when you're shooting outside with it. As with all of the newer Canon stabilised lenses, the IS is completely silent. So, let me run through the positives and negatives of this lens, starting with the negatives. Firstly, the focus ring, while smooth and quiet, is slightly more damp than I would like. It's totally subjective, but probably worth mentioning. Secondly, it doesn't come with a lens hood, but am I bothered? And thirdly, obviously, it's not weather sealed. That's it. And then the positives, and there are lots. Firstly, the price. This thing retails for under £400 in the UK, um, probably similar in dollars. Um, secondly, is the image quality and sharpness, which are outstanding. DxO Mark, which I don't normally use, I think it's normally a bit too uh, stats heavy for me, um, but I, I took a look anyway. They rank this as Canon's fifth sharpest lens, which considering they make lots is saying something. Um, and it's also over, in overall score ranked as joint second with uh, Canon's 35mm f1.4 Mark II, which I thought was crazy. Thirdly, it has image stabilisation, which I'm never going to sniff at. I always like stim image stabilisation in a lens if possible. So like it. Fourthly, it has vastly improved focus breathing compared to my Samyang Rokinon version, which is huge. I really like the fact that it will give me the true 35mm uh, angle, so like that too. And lastly, the weight and size. I really like the fact that it's so much smaller and lighter, it's more portable, I'm more likely to use it. It's, it's what I was looking for, so 
Looking at the clips of the colour chart, the most noticeable thing is obviously the crazy focus breathing of the Samyang. And then if you take a look at the whites, you can see that the Samyang is actually noticeably warmer looking compared to the two cannons. The out of focus areas on this lens look very, very pleasing. And as we stop down from F2 all the way to F22, we can see that things stay nice and rounded because of its eight rounded aperture blades. So what are the alternatives? There are loads of 35mm lenses out there, but I don't think there are any that compete in terms of value for money. I'll link everything below so you can check prices for yourself in your area. Check them out there. Of course, there's Canon's 35mm f1.4 version 2, which is supposedly optically excellent, but it's big and heavy and super expensive. So then there's Sigma's 35mm f1.4 art, which really does appeal because as we all know, the art lineup of Sigma lenses are amazing. The image quality is fantastic and everything. And, and actually for the price, you get tons for your money. This is around 500 pounds, something like that. Um, so it's, I think it's great value for money. The only thing is it's still big and heavy. So I, I I didn't get it. For Nikon users, there's a 35mm f1.8G. It's really reasonably priced. It doesn't have an image stabilization, but it is slightly faster at f1.8, and it's said to be a really good quality solid lens. And then they have their f1.4, which is ridiculously expensive and supposedly very good, but big and heavy, so. Tamron's new 35mm lens really did appeal. I did look at it. It's, it's got really modern styling, it's meant to have great performance, um, and I think it's a fair price as well. It's, it was just slightly too heavy for what I was looking for, um, but it was a close it was a close one. I almost snapped one up to see what it was like. I also have to mention Sony because they have their Distagon 35mm f1.4, which the price is astronomical, but then it's meant to be very good. Um, however too heavy for what I'm looking for, etc. and so on and so forth. And finally, my opinion. I was expecting the swap from my Samyang over to this Canon to be kind of a fairly mundane, uneventful swap. Um, but to be honest, the combination of all of the upgrades, the image stabilization, the sharpness, the size and weight benefits, the focus breathing now gone, um, they all add up to what feels like a really big upgrade, if, if you can believe that. The reduction in weight is also a really good thing if you're filming on a gimbal. I recently picked up a Zhiyun Crane gimbal, which um, I'm not going to be reviewing. It's, I feel like it's been reviewed to death out there, even though I really don't think it's... I think it's far from perfect product, despite all the reviews that I've seen out there. Um, but. I noticed that using this lighter lens, the, the crane uh, performs so much better than a lot of other lenses, so that's a huge upside for me as well. So I'm sure by now you can tell that I'm really quite smitten with this lens, and that's just because it ticks every box for me. It's compact, it's fast, it's got outstanding image quality, and in my opinion it's simply outstanding value for money. Um, and so that's it. I really hope you found this helpful, informative, and um, as always, I'll see you next time, guys. Let's help each other out and shoot better video. See While the buildings crumble, humble am I by the way you embrace. And when I find you sinking out of sight.